I'm going to show you how to make a procedural settlement generator. So this is a fairly simple tutorial and if you want I can later on have a more advanced version of the tutorial that will work as a sort of add-on. So the first thing we want to do is just uh, an actor, create a new class. It doesn't actually have to be of any specific whatever. You know, just anything just as long as it's from the actor base. And we're just going to call this um, procedural settlement. So in here, we're going to need to get a new uh, function first of all. So we're going to call this um, place house. And we're going to need two inputs. The first input is going to be a relative position. So let's call this relative and it'll be a vector, a vector 2D. The next one's going to be a static mesh, we'll just call this mesh, and there you go. Now the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to um, cast a, a line trace. What this is going to do is it's going to find, it's going to go from very high up of the actor, it's going to go down and it's going to hit the first bit of well, floor or whatever it sees and that's where we're going, to have, we're going to get a Z value. So we're going to do a line trace by channel and then we're going to have to get the start and then so what we, so what we want for the start is we want to get the actor position, it's location sorry, and we're going to want to add that to the relative position. So the position of the house relative to the actual actor. So that's the actual world position of where the house will be. And then we're going to want to add a, a, a large number in the z-axis and a, a, a large negative number in the z-axis for the end, as you can see. And then, we're, and then we're going to have to set up a debug. So this is so we can actually see the line that's traced. And we're just going to set it for duration. And we'll just set the duration for two seconds. Then we come out here and we're going to break this. And so now we'll know kind of where the location is. This is where the line trace is hit. So this is where we can place our building. So we're going to create... Um, so, so add component by class what we're going to have to get um, and we're going to get a static mesh component and you see it wants a relative transform so we're going to have to get a we're going to, have to make one of those so just make transform get the location put that in there so right now we've set the location however we haven't said exactly what mesh you want so we're going to have to go set mesh and now you can really use kind of whatever you want here it doesn't really matter I'm just going to use a simple this is how somebody made for the game that we're developing. And so that should be it. So you now got the house. It's in the right position. That's all good. However, of course, if we pull this into the scene, nothing's going to happen. So first of all, we need to actually implement this. Now, we don't want to implement it in the event graph because this is run during gameplay. We want to implement it before. So we go into the construction script and we'll just pull out place house. And in fact, sorry, I made a mistake. We want to pull this into this value here. So the input of mesh goes into the goes into what static mesh we're using. This makes it kind of more modular. And we'll just use the same value as we used before, and we'll set the relative to zero zero. And now we should have ah, I know what's happened. So I have made a mistake here. So as you can see, I seem to have you know. I've added the component. However, my mistake was adding the component, um, adding the actual world location as a relative location. So what we want to do here is we just want to get the relative location. We want to break it, and then we want to make this, and then we'll put in the two top values in the x and y, and then. And then we're going to use the obviously the impact location for the Z. So this should now work. 
you see the little lines coming off of where it's actually positioned. Now, of course, we want more than one house. And there's a lot of ways to do this. And if we d I do do a second video, I'll show you the a, a better way of doing it, um, which can be found in this demonstration here, which is a, a more verbose version. For this tutorial, we are just going to get kind of the population number. So do that as an, as an integer. I'm going to expose this, so we press this button here. And this means that you can edit it outside the blueprint. And we're just going to get this. Now we're going to, t to do, transform this to a float. And then we're going to power it. Put it to a power, and we'll just do a power a little under 1, so 0 0.8 is a good value. The reason we're doing this is that when our city gets bigger, so we're just adding more population, that's not actually people, that's more just population units. It won't increase at a linear rate, we want to, in to increase, we, we want, you know, a city 10 times the same size in terms of population, we want to be maybe double the size, whatever. And so we're just going to push this into a for loop. So we need to do this. And then for each one of these, we'll spawn a house. However, as you can see what's going to happen here is we're going to spawn them all in the same location. So to avoid any kind of overlap, we're going to have a value called used tiles. And this is going to be a vector 2D. And we're going to set this to an array. And then we're just going to have another vector 2D called temp tile. And this just won't be an array. So what we're going to do each time is we're going to get a temp tile. We're going to set it. And we're just going to have a, not a random float, a random float in range. So we're going to have two of these and we'll just set it to minus five, minus five, five, and five. Then we're going to check, hang on, is this actually acceptable? Can we actually place something here? So then go, I'm going to get this, and we're going to go, does it contain the item? Then we're going to go, not, and put it into here. So if it does contain the item, we're not going to do anything, but if it doesn't contain it, we are going to do something, so we are going to place the house. And we're also going to add an element, it's the temp tile we're going to add. So, you know, once you place the house, that tile's registered as well. Let's put that into there, and they um, believe should work. Of course, you pull it out, not going to do anything. As you add more, you can see there's never. We're getting more houses, and they're offset. However, we haven't actually offset them enough. So, for location, we're going to want to modify this by a linear number, which is a constant. Um, so, 256 is an, a lovely number we can use for this. And if we connect that, then it should work. So as you can see, all the various houses are quite far from each other. It increases a lot. We'll see we have a procedural generation. Now, of course, if you want a more advanced tutorial, just ask for it. Um, and we can create something much more like this. So this will have different buildings, better tile system, and rotation and whatnot.